Hello, hello. Mic check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hello you guys, welcome to the stream. Sorry we we're a little bit delayed tonight. We are registering a new Pokemon player, brand new to the game. He's actually borrowing one of my decks tonight and you're gonna see him on camera first thing. So how are you guys doing? I see everyone in the chat. Nice to see you guys. I'm Frosty Caribou. I'll be your caster tonight and we are here at Frontline Games card store. I know everyone says it looks like I'm in a GameStop but we are a full hobby shop. We have video games, board games, TCG, trading card games, so we're all around products here at <laughs> Frontline Games, but I hope everybody's having a good night, and we have some awesome matches lined up for tonight, so welcome to the stream, hope every everyone's good, and let's tune into our players here. We have Joe and Dewey for our first round coming up here, and... It's going to be an interesting one. We have a Dark Box. Joe is playing his infamous Dark Box. And Dewey is going to be playing Rampardos. Dewey is a brand new player. So I'm really interested to see how he does with his deck. Straight. You know, he, he barely looked at this deck. Like, he's it's very new for him. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to knock on the wall so that they know they can start whenever they are fully set up. And then uh, we'll also tune into their mics. So I will be right back. Let me know if you guys can hear them or not, or if it's too loud or anything. And then I'm also going to pull up their cards that they have out currently. And then we'll start talking about this match. Oh wait, wh why is Dewey starting with a fossil? Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you can't start with a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a Pokemon. Yeah, it's an item card. Oh, is it true? Do you want to just re like reset up or? I don't care. I mean, I, I because really... you have a basic. I do not have a basic. Okay, so I'll have to so reset can you up. Re You'll. Ha I, can I think we should just restart the whole shuffle. Yeah. Because <laughs> the. Can I get a judge call on that? Okay. I think the game lost. No. Uh, no, I it's. Want, I wouldn't do that either. Yeah, it's pretty jacked just, up. I mean, if he can reshuffle and then just I'll take them all again. Because I'm still on the first okay. turn. I'll just draw uh, a card. Uh, all right. Okay, right, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's fine. I just looked up and he's got a fossil out for his act. I, I just wasn't sure because you said you can play it's it as a free basic. Yeah, but I don't know. It counts oh man. That's why as soon as I saw it, I questioned it. I should have just. Asked. <laughs> yeah, I was. Oh right man. Here. Okay, so they're gonna set up for a mulligan real quick. Ooh, sorry about that, you guys. Had to fix that real quick. I looked up and I saw a fossil and I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's not how the game is played. <laughs> so the confusion there is that fossil a fossil says on it that you treat it like it's a Pokemon. I think it's like a 60 HP or something Pokemon. But because it's an item, it's not labeled a Pokemon. You can't start with it as a basic because it's not labeled as a basic. It is an item. So you can play it as a Pokemon onto your bench, but you cannot start with it because it doesn't, le it doesn't technically qualify as a basic Pokemon. So as soon as we got that fixed, we are all good. Uh, mulligans are pretty common with this deck. He's playing Rampardo. So Dewey wants his ideal setup here would be to start with a Jirachi as active. So he's going to see if he has a basic here. And it looks like he's going into a second mulligan. <laughs> like I said, very uh very common with this deck. Looks like Dewey did finally get a basic. Unfortunately it is a Mew, which is not really a basic you want to start with, especially when he has uh four Jirachis in his deck, unfortunately. But Dewey does technically have the advantage in this matchup, I would say, because Joe is taking weakness to fighting Pokemon. Uh, on top of that, Joe does play a lot of tag team GXs that are basics that Dewey can one shot with Wild Crash with his Rampardo. So let me pull up these Pokemon. Come on, we'll turn on their mics so you guys can hear them. Yeah, the Mew start. <laughs> Bummer. You know that ends your turn, right? Yeah. Looks like Dewey's just going with straight into research lab and ending his turn there. Now it's back to Joe. So I believe this would be second turn for Joe because he actually started off here. Dewey going to choose to go for... For a Cronitos and 
Why am I blinking? Is it Tortuga? Yeah, Tortuga. I was thinking Tortuga was the evolution, but that's Caracosta. So he's going with a Cranitos and a Tortuga from the research lab. Let me pull up this Greninja Zoroark. If you guys don't know, the card that Joe has in active is the Greninja Zoroark tag team. Uh, and it hits for 30 damage base and then also 30 plus every single dark energy that is on his board state. So multiplies energy, um, or his deck multiplies energy so that he can multiply damage, essentially. He's playing Dark Cry Down, which allows him to attach two straight from hand as the ability that dark Cry has and we're gonna see the knock the first knock on that Mew so sad and Joe is gonna go down a prize card there he needs as much of a lead as he can get we see a Jirachi now coming out for Dewey he's gonna attach to the Cranitos he needs to switch into that Jirachi would be the move. Looks like okay. that's... Ooh, he's not going to switch. Dewey definitely should have switched into the... Uh, into the Jirachi there, I think. Because he actually can't use Wild Crash even if he wanted to this turn. Um, even if he did have a Karate Belt on that Cronitos. Because he would need at least two energies. So maybe he'll play into another switch? I don't know, but it's going to be rough if he loses that Cronitos, unfortunately. Yeah, and Tino, yeah. Uh, Joe has updated his Dark Box to fit into Cosmic Eclipse. That's the Baby Guzzlord. That is the Guzzlord that actually takes an extra prize card if it knocks out your Pokemon with its move. It's really good. Very, very good card. All right, finally getting this Greninja up here. Sorry, guys. It's hard when you're casting alone having to do all of this, but I appreciate you guys' patience. And let's pull up this Cranitos right here. For Dewey, it's unfortunate because Dewey is going to lose this Cranitos that he actually has lined up here, and he doesn't really have any other way to line up another one. I think what we're seeing here is a new player playing a slightly complicated deck. I wouldn't say Rampardos is an easy deck to get into straight off the bat at all. Like, it's it's actually pretty difficult, in my opinion. We do see the Jirachi going into lead, which is good for Dewey. He's going to need to utilize that Stellar Wish as much as he can here. It doesn't look like he's a Pokemon. Uh, I would probably take that Cynthia, just Cynthia's hand, honestly. That's probably the jam here. I see a rare candy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's not an easy one. The thing is, Rampardos, if you guys are unfamiliar, let me pull out the Rampardos. Rampardos is an awesome Pokemon that uh, just instantly knocks out any basic Pokemon. If you have three fighting energy on it or two fighting energy, you're behind in prize cards and you have a Karate Belt, you're instantly knocking out any basic Pokemon, including Tag Team GXs or regular GXs if they're basics, um, which is really good for a one a one prizer deck, you know. You're losing these one prizer Pokemon, but the whole goal is to, you know, pick it up toward the end and get those big hit three three prize card knockouts like the Greninja Zorark or that Guzzlord uh, tag team GX on the bench. It'd be very good for, for Dewey to be able to hit out there. But again, Dewey's brand new to the game. He he's also a magic player, so very different for him. He's going to shuffle a Jirachi back in with his Pokecom, and let's see what he goes for. I didn't see if he had a rare candy or not. That would have been super awesome if he had a rare candy, because you could actually rare candy that fossil into a Rampardos, which would be great. Um, he would still need some time to charge it up with energy, unfortunately, and I'm not sure if he has energy in hand. But we shall see. All right, we see pass back to Joe. Uh, roll 
There is the Rampardos for you guys, so you can see its actual moves. Not only is Wild Crash great, but he Dewey is hitting weakness on Joe's Dark Pokemon with clean hit. So that 60, if it is a basic Pokemon, will be hitting for 120. So it still can be really good in this matchup for Dewey. Yeah, Rampardos is pretty busted. In a lot of matchups, it definitely is. We see the Martial Arts Dojo out there as well. So uh, Dewey would also be hitting for an extra 40 damage on top of that 120 with clean hit. Unfortunately, he does not have a Rampardos out. I think what would have been a better move for Dewey would be to get two Cranitos out um, in the beginning there with the Research Lab instead of the Tortuga. I know that Dewey didn't know if Joe's deck played Pokemon tool cards or not, but the Caracasa wouldn't be something he would need to play in this matchup because I don't believe Joe has any tool cards that he'd be attaching to his Pokemon, which is perfect for Caracasa um, because it does turn off Pokemon tool cards, but... I didn't see a Rampardos from that copycat. Oh man, this is so rough. These draws have not been in his favor either for Dewey. I really wish I could just like instruct him. No, when you want to help, but you can't. Joe is just kind of cruising this matchup. He was nervous about this because he does take weakness, but you know, Joe's deck also works really, really fast. Um, you know, by by the time he's got two energies on, he's hitting for a base, pretty much 90 damage, and he got the dark cry out, the attachment of two energies, uh, so those three energies that turn, he was just he's already hitting for an insane amount of damage currently, so it's not looking too good in this setup here. Do we need a good top deck? Oh, and he top decked a custom catcher, which is not at all what he needed, and that looks like it's probably going to be game there. Is that a Cynthia? Oh, perfect. Oh, man. So we need a good six cards here for Dewey. Dewey needs a Jirachi for the bench. Dewey needs a Pokemon Research Lab to get more on his bench. Dewey needs a Rampardos to hit this Greninja out right now. <laughs> he has the energy. He has the Crinitos. We need to see a top deck Rampardos to pull this off. And we got it. He literally just top decked the Rampardos. <laughs> what? Oh man, I was like, yo, he needs a top deck Rampardos, and he totally got it. That is so awesome. <laughs> there we go. Joe sees right. it. Joe Joe sees it, and he's like, all right, we see it. That was awesome. We got, ah, perfect. Reset Stamp 2. Solid move. Reset Joe into two cards. Oh, that reminds me. I've not been doing the prize cards. Sorry, you guys. Joe is down to two prize cards already. Dewey's still at his six, but that is about to be three for Dewey once he gets the knock on this Greninja Zorark. So Joe is definitely going to promote. Oh, man. Joe's going to promote. Oh, no. He's going to promote his Guzzlord, but he could use his Guzzlord's uh, GX move, I believe, which allows him to take two prize cards, if I'm not mistaken. Let me pull this up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Or GX. Oh no! <laughs> he's gonna, take two he's gonna take two. Yeah, that's gonna be game. No! Ah, I forgot all about that GX move. Let me pull that up for you guys while they set up their second match here. That Guzzlord is insane. That Guzzlord GX, it's it's uh, GX move is just take two prize cards. So really, Joe just needed to get down to those two, and then even if he lost the Greninja, he knew that he would be able to save that game and take that win. Yeah, GG, you guys. That was a GG. I don't know if I have that. Uh, Guzzlord. It's Naganadel Guzzlord, right? Is the Naganadel named first on that card? I'm trying to look for it here. Oh, yeah, it is the Naganadel first. So there is that card for you guys to see. Uh, it's moves there. The Chaotic Order GX. Oh, man. That was brutal to see. Do we had some pretty bad luck there? Um... I definitely think a little bit of a misplay in the beginning, not switching into the Jirachi and instead choosing to copycat, which copycatted him, I believe, into like three cards, which really didn't help his setup there. If he had switched into the Jirachi, Stellar Wished, he could have maybe gotten a better supporter like a Cynthia or something to allow him uh, to get better cards there. Looks like Joe is um, going into one mulligan there. 
All right, we see two actives there. Dewey's going to get an extra card. It looks like Dewey is starting with two basic Pokemon, which is good. Hopefully he has a Jirachi up front center there, and we're going to see the prize cards going out. I'll tune into their uh, player mics in a second, and we'll see what we have in the active position. Did Dewey get his extra mulligan? Oh, two Jirachis. Perfect. I don't know if Dewey took his extra mulligan. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, that's his draw for turn. Uh-oh, I'm not sure if Dewey took his extra mulligan card or not. Let's tune into the player mics. We see a Lily first turn, which is pretty solid. Oh, attaching to the Jirachi. Probably, I probably wouldn't do that. But we're, we're looking for a Pokemon Research Lab here in the Stellar Wish. Oh, man, he didn't get it. So we need to see... We need to see... Oh, man. I'm pretty sure he has a Cynthia in hand. I would honestly probably just Cynthia this. If he hadn't attached the energy to the Jirachi, he actually could have attached the energy to the Fossil. You never want to attach the energy to the Jirachi unless you're planning to hard retreat it, I guess, which he could do. But you do play skateboards in this deck. Uh, for that reason. He's going to choose to Lily instead of Cynthia here. He's going to Lily for four. Uh, he did get the Pokemon Research Lab, which is good for first turn. He definitely needs to utilize that. And he has a Lance Prism Star in hand as well from that draw. He does have a Rampardos to be able to uh, evolve next turn if he pulls that Cronidos out onto the bench, which hopefully that's what he's going to do. I would like to see the Aerodactyl and the Cronidos. I think that would be the best play for Dewey here because that Aerodactyl can hit an insane amount of damage with its GX move. He's going to choose to do two Cranidos. Not a horrible play. We'll see what he decides to do with that. It's probably good to have some some leverage there as well. I definitely want to take an Aerodactyl, though. He does play an Aerodactyl GX, which is, can be very brutal in this matchup. Tino, Cosmic Eclipse is a good set. It's a very good set. A lot of amazing GXs. I wouldn't say a lot of amazing baby Pokemon. I think the good baby cards we got out of Cosmic Eclipse, like the Empoleon deck, uh, Alolan Ninetales, uh, Mimikyu, that baby Guzzlord. There's definitely some good baby cards, but I think the real stars from Cosmic Eclipse are in the GX Pokemon for sure. All right, we see a Secret Rare Cherish Ball. When, when did Joe start playing with Secret Rares? flexing on us here. Secret rare cherish ball and a secret rare rare candy. I like it. Got that from his greens exploration. That rare candy is um, hopefully going to go into an incineroar here. This is first turn so you can't evolve this turn. I don't see an incineroar in hand. Joe needs to get something on his bench like time oh. now and it doesn't look like he has anything. Pass. For, oh man, passing with a Litten and active. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's scary on Joe's part. Hopefully he's relying on Dewey to kind of set up here. We see the evolution into Rampardos. Oh, the hard retreat. The energy paid off. We're going to see the knock on the Litten. The Litten only has 60 HP. That's a knock, is it not? The Litten has 60? And that's game. Oh, man. Look at that. The tables have turned. That easy win for Dewey. The knock on the Litten. 60 HP Litten. Uh, I knew it. I was like, Joe, no. You need something on your bench. He went for the Cherish Ball. And he went for the Rare Candy. But he he couldn't evolve. Like, I, I don't know if he was planning to Cherish Ball into Incineroar. And evolve into Incineroar next turn. But... He just couldn't risk leaving the Litten up for that, that turn, and unfortunately, that's what happened. That's so sad. That's funny. I was like, I wouldn't have attached to the Jirachi, but it actually helped him. Attaching to that Jirachi allowed him to um, hard retreat with the Jirachi, which is pretty much exactly what he needed to do. All right, we see two basics out here. Uh, Joe is probably going to opt to go first, I would assume. Ooh, that was really loud. <laughs> Soy, thank you so much for those bits. I appreciate it. Wow, was that really loud for you guys? I feel like I need to turn that down. <laughs> Soy, thank you so much. Congrats on that beautiful new bit badge. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was super loud for me. 
All right, let's see what we have here. I'm going to tune into the player mics and also pull up these Pokemon on the screen here. We got a Sneasel, and we have a beautiful Jirachi. We saw a coach trainer for two. Oh, man, Joe's in a rough start here. No, he's passing with another 70 HP in the active. I mean, Dewey's not going to be able to do anything this turn, uh, that's for sure. But still a risky still a risky situation. It looks like Dewey had... Did he have two custom catchers? Oh, Annie Lily's first turn, you guys. That is a setup. I don't know if he does have the Pokemon. He needs... Oh, he's going to go with the Pokecom. I didn't get to see his hand, so I guess I don't really understand this decision. Hopeless! I want a Frosty Carol card so bad. Hopeless, thank you so much for those bits. I am so sorry. I need to order more cards. My plan is to um, make sure I can give them away on my Patreon. But I need to order more cards before I am able to do that. So I am so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he also can't evolve uh, first turn as well. He put the Jirachi asleep there. He's going to attach Karate Belt onto the fossil. It's unfortunate we didn't see a Pokemon Research Lab. This is the first time Dewey has not gotten the Research Lab first turn. The Jirachi does wake up. So we are not going to see that research lab, which is what Joe wants to see. He does not want to see a research lab out there because that's just kind of a huge catalyst to Dewey's deck that Joe did not want to see. So I'm sure he's happy about that, especially with only a Sneasel in the active. <laughs> Sorry, Sloth Girl. Our Nightbot, our Nightbot is pretty harsh. And then you also can discard two other cards, and if you do, you attach two basic energy to them. Okay. Um, so I'm going to All right, so let's see what Joe does with this red and blue. He's going to discard, it looks like a custom catcher and an energy. And search for a Pokemon to evolve into. He's going to evolve into that Weavile GX. And attach two energy cards as well to it. So he's going to have three. Let me pull up that Weavile for you guys to see. His Weavile is fantastic in this deck. Uh, because it does move around energies with its ability. Which is very, very good for this deck. Unfortunately, it's also very easy to turn off in many matchups. There's that Weavile. He's also doing Claw Slash for, does that say 130? Or is that 100? I can't see it on the art. <laughs> yeah, Nightbot's very savage. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he did discard a custom catcher. I believe he plays four, though, so that's not that huge of a deal. Claw slash for knockout. Claw slash for the knock on that Jirachi. All we see is a fossil here. This could be not good for Dewey. We need to see a rare candy. He does have the Carnitos. Looks like he has the Aerodactyl in hand. He needs to top... Oh, the top deck into Jirachi. That's good. Oh, man. He would need to either have a switch... Oh! Into the Aerodactyl! Oh, I totally forgot about that. He could totally just fossil into the Aerodactyl. I didn't even think about that. For some reason, I was thinking Aerodactyl was a stage 2. But no, Aerodactyl is a stage 1. He can evolve that fossil into the Aerodactyl. And he's going to be hitting 50 times. Oh, man. He's going to be hitting 50 times... The amount of energy attached to that Weavile for the GX, and it's free. He doesn't even need an energy to attach, and he's hidden weakness. That Weavile is going to be going to be knocked out, is it not? Because he's going to hit it for 300. Am I tripping? Oh, snap. Are we about to see the win for Dewey? This game, too? He put a Super Boost out, but it doesn't affect... Yeah, you can attach it well, he can, but it's not a stage two, colors. yeah. It counts as a color. He didn't need that energy, though, is the thing. He needs to use his GX move and win the game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... No, 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 he hits weakness. Hang on, let me go remind them. He hits weakness.
Joe's so upset. He's so upset. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's so happy Dewey won. Dewey's a brand new player in Pokemon, and he just won this game, you guys. If Dewey can do it, you guys can do it too, I believe. I believe. <laughs> that was an insane game one. I am so happy with that game one. That was so good. I love Rampardos. I'm very biased toward Rampardos. That is my deck. So I'm going to be a little bit biased. I'm so happy it played out like that. Uh, even though I'm sad, Joe had to lose that one. <laughs> Taco had to lose that game. I feel bad, but... Rampardos is strong against dark decks. What do you, what can you say, you know? So <laughs> we're going to go to our commercial break uh, real quick here, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Always good to spend my Tuesday nights with you guys. I appreciate it a bunch. And we will be right back after our short commercial break. <laughs> 